I find myself right clicking and selecting show in Explorer far too often. And that's just to get access to that folder outside of Unity in an Explorer window. So I'm gonna fix that today with our friend, the on open asset attribute and some nifty little unknown editor functionality that you'll probably want to get used to. So let's get started. We'll create a C-sharp script and we're gonna call this open folder tool. And we'll bring that up in Visual Studio. Here we are. And we'll get rid of the mono behavior and we'll get rid of all of its functionality because we don't care about any of it. Now we're going to use Unity Editor, obviously. And we're also going to be using the callbacks because that's where our open asset is. So without further ado, on open asset. Now, if you haven't watched my videos before, on open asset basically tells Unity that if somebody double clicks on a file or a model or a folder in Unity in the project view, this functionality that's associated with that attribute will be called and you get to determine whether you deal with it or Unity deals with it. And I've done this before in my audio preview tool, which is a super cool video showing you how to preview audio without having to go press another button and do everything else. You could just double click on a piece of audio and it plays. Go check that out afterwards. I'll leave a link in the description. So how do we create this method? Well, as I say, we want to tell Unity whether we deal with it or not. So we'll return a ball and we're interested in on open asset. And what this actually provides us with is it provides us with an ID. And this ID we can use to get an object. So how do we do that? Well, we use the editor utility class and there's something called the instance ID to object. And that gives us an instance ID. Now, what does that return? Well, as I said, it returns an object. There we go. Now we want to get the path to that object. Now, again, Unity gives us some functionality here from the asset database and we get asset path and we pass it the object. And now we actually have the path we're interested in. Excellent stuff. But how do we know that this is a valid folder? How do we know that this is a directory? Well, a lot of people here, if they're from the C-sharp world, would start going towards system, dot io dot path oh i've spelt that all wrong which one is coming up wrong system dot io dot path and starting to use the directory functionality in there to see whether it was a directory but unity actually gives us something here in the asset database and it's called is valid folder and you can pass it a path and that's a path relative to the root which is what you get back here so you don't have to do all this amalgamation of concatenating paths and everything and put them into directory in the system.io.path to find out whether it's the right directory. You can use this one to say, is this a valid folder? Yes, it is. Great. I know I've got a folder. Now, the next thing we're going to do is open that up in Explorer. And again, C sharp people out there might go, okay, brilliant. I'm going to use process.start. Don't know why that kicked off there. I'm going to use process and that's from the system diagn uh, diagnostics and then do um, start there and then just give it the path once it's concatenated with everything else. But that doesn't actually have to happen. Unity again gives us this piece of unknown functionality or little known functionality in the editor utility called reveal in finder. And what that does is it basically says to the system, okay, reveal this in the finder or the explorer, whatever you want to call it. Basically, it will open it up and show you it. Now we want to tell Unity, right, brilliant. Well, we're dealing with the folder, not you, so we'll return true. But some of you eagle-eyed people out there who use Unity a lot might know that if you double click on a folder, it actually expands that folder, which is actually quite useful in the project view. So we want to have this as a separate piece of functionality. Now, what you can do and what we do in a lot of our editor functions is see if a change a key change has actually been pressed and in this case i want to see if the shift key has been pressed if the shift key has been pressed brilliant do my functionality otherwise you have added unity so we're going to use the event system so let's get what the current event is so if i come in here and go event.current it will give me whatever the current event is and we're going to want to see if there is actually a current event so if equals null or we want to see if the user has pressed down the shift key. In this case, we want to say, have they pressed down the shift key? Well, if they haven't, then we'll return false. We'll let Unity deal with the actual situation. Otherwise, we'll return true. So get the current event, 
see if that event exists and if the shift key is pressed down. If it's not, return false, otherwise return true. Right, let's save that and jump back into Unity. So we're back in Unity and now if I double click on a folder, say packages, I can see mega props streaming and that's this asset here from the asset store and I'll leave a link in the description. But if I was to close this and now I hold the shift key on my keyboard and double click, suddenly it actually opens in Explorer and I have Explorer here and it's ready to go. I can see there's my packages. And again, just to show you this is working, I'll drop down deeper into here and we'll come to this particles folder. Again, shift, double click, and suddenly my Explorer is open with the particles folder ready to go. And now in Unity, I have no more right clicking to open folders. And that's gotta be worth a like on this video. And as this was a really quick one, why not treat yourself and watch the next one showing on screen now.